Hello, this is Market Titus Performance. Today we're just going to give you an inside look on a dirt track engine that we're doing some assembly work on. Um, this is a 302 based engine. We have already built a 351 Cleveland based engine for the same class and the same customer. That engine's proven to be pretty much the powerhouse in that class, but now what we're doing is we're looking to see how much power we can make with a smaller engine package. These engines, their big limiting factor, uh, besides the numerous rules we have to meet to, for this particular class, is a 4412-500CFM two-barrel highly carburetor. So there's only so much air you can get into the engine, and what we try to do is we try to make as broad of a power range as we can. Uh, we find that some of the engines that we compete against fall off in power once they get past a certain RPM, and what we're actually shooting for is to hold onto that power for a long period of time and then not have that power drop off until a pretty high RPM. And that's why we're usually pretty successful uh, having a good power for this, uh, for this particular class. But what we're doing with this engine, it's a 302 based engine as I said, but we're fitting it with a 351 Cleveland two barrel Australian head. And what we have to do per rules of this class, there's like I said, many. We have to run a stock OD style or, or smaller OD spring. We can only have 125 pounds of seat pressure. We can't have any uh, lightweight materials as far as retainers. They have to be a ferrous metal, so we use a tool steel retainer. And we're using a beehive style because that's pretty much the lightest thing that we can find. And we also do um, put a small stem valve in these even though we've enlarged the head substantially over, over a two barrel size valve, um, the small stem helps shed weight off the valve train. So what we're trying to do is keep the valve train as stable as we can for as long as we can uh, so we can turn as much RPM as that little carburetor will allow. As you can see these are flat tappets which I try to stay away from as much as I can but Per the rules, that's what we're mandated to run, so that's what we run. Um, this engine's also been fitted with a 351 Windsor oil pan because that was the best oil pan I felt um, that I could obtain through these trying times of really can't get a lot of parts. This is the other head that's on the assembly bench, and as you see, what we've done is we replaced the guides, or actually machine out because these heads didn't have guides, uh, but they were just machined right into the cast iron from the factory. But we machined those out and put a, a bronze guide in it with a smaller OD. And then we use a valve that has a radius groove tip because that actually I think makes the valve a little bit stronger. Uh, we do use a 10 degree lock still, which um, that is about as lightweight as we can get for a, a spring lock retainer combination and still meet the rules of the class. On the 351 Cleveland style head, what we've had to do is mimic uh, a water crossover port, such as what would be on a Boss 302. Uh, we've had to add a bolt hole to the front so that we can actually squeeze down the front of the manifold. Uh, because this bolt does not exist on the 302 style manifold. And this is the manifold that we're using, so that's the extra bolt hole in the front that we had to use. And then what we had to do was angle mill all these pads uh, all the way down and create new bolt holes in the back where these had a boss for a water fitting. And that way it allows us to bolt the 302 manifold to the 351 Cleveland head. But because the Cleveland has a higher port off the floor of the deck height of the block, we had to make these spacers, and these spacers get bolted onto the head so that they don't slide down when we torque the manifolds down. And then underneath of that will go a valley plate that will make it'll go front to back of the block that will fill this in so the manifold actually will not see oil to the bottom of the manifold. There'll be an additional air gap underneath the manifold in the valley plate, which will help keep the manifold from heat sinking. Um, we can't really show what we're doing with rocker arms and whatnot on here because um, we make this system specific for this customer and uh, we've vowed not to uh, 
let loose of any of the secrets that make his engine what his engine is. But we'll have that manifold mounted up on it. Um, we'll have the spacers and everything made. We'll have the valley pan made. We'll be getting this thing ready to put on the dyno. And um, then we'll go through some break-in procedures and figure out what kind of power this little thing makes. Take care.